guys, by the end of this video, you're gonna have nine ways in your brain to overcome any objection. It's gonna make you bulletproof. Stay tuned. Okay guys, number one, you've got to be comfortable. Listen, if you start bringing uncomfort into the deal, it's the first level to understanding objections. Say it's no big deal. It's no big deal. Just lighten the mood, guys. When people start to not like you, then they start to object even more. So if they object to something, I know that you've spent time with them. I know that you're going through this process with them, but take selling them out of your mind and start putting serving them in your mind. So many amateur salespeople, they let that discomfort creep in and they don't realize before they can even handle an objection, you can see it all over their face. So never lower your state, S-T-A-T-E. Never lower your state, be comfortable, understand. In sales, you're gonna get objections all the time. It doesn't mean that they're not gonna buy from you. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna be able to sell them. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that you're going to have to solve another problem. The most money will get exchanged hands, like you're gonna make more money, when problems get solved. So, this objection, it could be a problem. We're gonna go over exactly how to handle it, but step number one, just be comfortable, man. Be comfortable, just in your face, in your, in your eyes. They say something, don't get all upset. Be like, all right, cool. Let me think about how to handle that. And then go into step number two. Step number two, you got to pause. They say an objection, pause. Don't just strike back. Don't just try to prove your intelligence or else you're gonna come off not that intelligent. So what I want you to do is pause. No frantic monologue, no really trying to close them really fast. None of that, just pause. Just go, hmm, what is this person trying to say? So number two, you gotta pause. Just take it easy. Listen before you respond. Don't listen to respond intelligent. Don't listen to respond intelligently. Listen to serve and solve their problem. Okay. So step number two, just pause. All right. Number three is super important. So it's slower your pace. Okay. Some of you, right when you get an objection, you're trying to speed up and solve it and you're, you're trying to force your intelligence. And what you need to do is just slow down. Slowing down is often overlooked in overcoming objections. So I want you to slow down. I want you to think about what's really going on. I want you to go back to number one, which is just be calm, just be cool, just be collected, just be there to serve. What's your intention look like? What's your authenticity look like? Do you really want to help them? Or are you just trying to close them? The goal is to try to help people. And if you really want to build a brand, a sales career for life, then you're going to slow down. You're going to go back to number one. You're going to be comfortable. And number two, you're gonna pause. So when you get down to number three and you slower your pace and you're connecting a little bit deeper with them, it's gonna build more trust through this little challenge, which is an objection. So just slow down. Okay guys, number four is clarify. Clarifying it is super important. If the same objection keeps coming up, I want you to clarify with the prospect what is really going on. So it could be like this. Hey guys, so listen, you know, I, I know that you said that the payment works for you. I know that you said the car works for you, all of these different things. But what I'm hearing is that it's just the price that you're mainly concerned with right now. Is that the only challenge that we have? Is it? Yeah. Okay. So all of these other things meet your needs. All we have to do is clarify that we just need to do a little bit better on the price. That's what you're asking. That's what you're asking. They say yes. Okay. Now I can go in and handle an objection because I know that it is actually the root cause and it's not something that they've just made up and they've thrown out there and I'm striking back and I'm trying to handle it. I'm like, hey, let's go back to that, what you just said. That's the most important thing to you? Yeah, perfect. I got a way that we can handle that. And then I can go to number, I can go to solve their objection. I can go to handle their objection. I can go to get a little bit more clarity with my manager, whoever I need to be able to wrap this deal up and put it together. Number four, if that objection keeps coming up, I want you to clarify it. I want you to clarify it so that that way we can go into number five, which is dig deep. So when they say this objection, what you're gonna do if, if you've paused, if you're comfortable, if you slowed your pace, you're gonna say, hey, so that area that you want to focus on that's your biggest concern am i right and they're like yes i'm like okay perfect that area and that leads me into number five which is dig in dig i can then start digging deeper into this objection so i can understand the, cl the client's state of mind i want to know this client's state of mind i want to know why they're saying this sometimes the objection isn't 
BS. It is something that they're truly dealing with. So when I start digging a little bit deeper into that objection, I can say, hey, you know, you've said that this is a bit your biggest concern. I've clarified that concern. Can you tell me why? Stop being so surface level. Stop being so surface level. Amateur salespeople, they stay on the surface and that's why they never really solve big problems. They never really get to the root cause of it. And that's why they end up making small paychecks. So when you're digging, dig deeper and dig deeper with authenticity, dig deeper with curiosity, dig deeper with caring, dig deeper with saying why. Why should be your main question. It should be like, hey, why do you say that? Hey, why does that mean, what does that mean to you? Hey, what's up with that? Who, what, when, where, why? Hey, why does that keep coming up? Why do you believe that way? You know, can you explain that a little bit deeper for me? Can you explain that a little bit deeper for me? They'll explain it deeper and it'll allow you to get to know their state of mind, which will then allow you to actually know that if it's a real problem, then we actually really need to solve it. We, we don't need to just handle an objection. We might need to solve this root issue. Now that you've dug deep, it brings me into number six. We want to totally isolate that objection. And that isolation comes from like now we just put it in its own little room and we shut the door behind the objection. We're like, hey, this is the problem. This is exactly what you're going through. I totally understand where you're coming from. I've dug deep. I actually understand where they're coming from. Now I can isolate it. I can figure out how my product solves that problem. And then I can get to number seven, which is I can get everything out on the table. I can say, hey, in getting to know you, I just got to know you a whole lot deeper in what you said. My product can do X, Y, Z. It can help you in this, this, this way. It, we can solve this objection, and I'm not gonna say that to them, but in your mind, you need to be able to say, I can solve this objection and get everything out on the table. Get everything out on the table that you know can solve this objection. Don't never say objection. Just say, hey, this challenge that you presented, this thing that you're presenting, that what you're saying and getting to know you more, let me tell you how we can handle this. Let me tell you the solution that we can provide. Now, that brings me to number eight, move on. Stop sticking to it for a long time. Now you, you understood it, you've dug deep on it, you're comfortable, you've paused, you've made them feel heard, you're, you're listening to them, you've offered what we can do on that solution, you gotta move on. You gotta move on. You gotta say, great, now we can move on and keep going forward, keep going forward. Some salespeople, they just go backwards, they go backwards. They do all this work and then they gotta go backwards. They go backwards and they can't figure out. Your goal is to progress the sales forward. It's to progress it forward. Amateur salespeople know the sales process. They know the sales process. Meet, greet, fact, find, qualify. You guys know what I'm talking about. Legendary salespeople know where the customer is at on the sales process. And when they try to get off on the sales process, they know how to take them back on and get them exactly where they need to go. They know how to line them up. And that brings me into number nine. Now you've moved on, you've got everything out on the table, you've isolated, you understand that it's real, you've moved on. Your customer might offer up a couple of things that they're still a little bit nervous on. They're still a little bit nervous to close up. They're still a little bit nervous to go forward. And you say, hey man, can I get your permission to offer up a couple more solutions that our product can do for you? Can I get your permission to you know, tell you a little bit more about what we can do to solve what you actually have going on? Whatever the problem is, because that's what we're solving. Whatever they're there for. They're like, yeah, okay, listen, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, I know that you wanted this, our product does this. If it does that, then that's gonna solve everything that you needed it to do. What should be done today shouldn't be put off for tomorrow. Let's move forward, let's get this done for you. And then you're not gonna have to think about this every single day versus you can now move forward and enjoy the product that we just prescribed you. So your goal in this entire formula is to be the doctor, man. It's to be the doctor, the guy that's comfortable, the guy that's going into this conversation authentically, truly caring, truly trying to understand these people. Have you ever seen a doctor go in and he's just high pressuring you on fixing your arm? You need to fix that arm. No, you haven't. You go in there with, a, with an elbow injury, he says, hey, let me see your arm. He's comfortable. He's not crazy. And he says, hey, let me ch check that out. Move that thing around. How does that work? He pauses. He's like, hmm, let me think about what we can do. And he's actually thinking about what he can do to solve your problem, right? He slows his pace. He's not in a rush. Some of you are just in a rush all the time. They can feel, they can feel your eagerness to close. Don't let them feel that eagerness. Don't let them get into your state. You need to clarify that. Is that elbow the only thing that's hurting you today? Yeah, it's, it's, it, that's it. 
That's it. They might say it's the wrist too. Hey, I might need to look at that. Okay, it's the elbow. All right, cool. Dig. What, what, what made you get that elbow injury? Was it baseball? What is it? Oh yeah, it was baseball. Tell me a little bit more about that. How long have you been playing baseball? What have you been doing? Have you been doing this for 10 years? Is that kind of the trauma that we got on the elbow? Yeah. Oh my God, man. Now it makes a lot of sense. Now I understand. You know, now I can get to know you more. Okay. You guys feel me? Now you can understand a little bit more. Isolate. This is the only thing that we need to fix today is on your elbow. See, I got a doctor mindset. I'm going in with their intentions in the middle of the deal. I know that I'm putting their tensions right here in the middle. I'm understanding it. And then when I go to prescribe something and I've handled their objection and I've moved on, when I go to prescribe something, it makes sense. And there's not a whole lot of objections if you're doing this way. You shouldn't have a whole lot. You should be very authentic. You should be very yourself. You should be carrying good energy. You should be carrying a good attitude. You should be caring about people. And if you care about people, man, you just, and you can salt, go through this formula, it makes closing objections really easy. Now, do we have word tracks? Like if you said, hey, I need to think about it. Let's use the car industry, for example, or a proposal. I'd say, hey, of course you need to think about it. I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. What I like to do is give you a quick five minute proposal of all the facts and figures. That way, when you go home, you truly have something to think about. That's how I would handle an objection. But first, there's framework to understand that objection. And then what we really teach is internalize it, memorize it, and then customize it. Because I know the verbiage, because I know that word track, hey, of course you need to think about it. I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. What I'd like to do is give you a quick five minute proposal of all the facts and figures. That way when you go home, you truly have something to think about. Would that be fair? See, that's handling an objection. But first I gotta know if it's a real objection. I gotta know what these people are really going through. I gotta dig a little bit deeper. I need to isolate that objection so I don't have multiple. And when I do that, then I can say, hey man, totally get it, man. You guys are making a big purchase. Where you and your family are at today, you know, it sounds like you guys got a lot going on. You're moving, you know, you moved to a new area, you got a new job, man. I get it, man. The family's getting bigger, your wife's pregnant. I know, man. Shoot, man, I've been there. So listen, dude, I totally understand that. I don't want to pressure you. But what I'd like to do is send you and your wife home with a proposal. That way, when you guys do go home, you truly have something to think about. If you were to just leave right now, you wouldn't even have all the information. So in fact, you really couldn't make the best decision for your family. Does that make sense? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, perfect. So let me get this on paper for you. I'll handle that for you. And then dude, it's, it's, it's okay. You know, he's like, oh, I love that. See, there's no abrasiveness. There's no pressure. Do I know my job? Yeah. Do I know how to dig a little bit deeper, be comfortable under that pressure? Do I know how to keep my state high and not keep my state low? Yeah, that's important. That's, that's the framework. That's the foundation to solving objections. Don't get triggered. Don't lose your state. Be comfortable. Pause, slow your place, clarify, isolate, dig, get everything on the table that you can handle. Ask to be able to make solutions and serve these people at the highest level. Last thing I'm gonna say in this video is the most important thing. If you truly care about people, if you truly care, you'll never worry about selling. You'll always worry about serving them first and money will just rain on you. If your intention is to do the right thing, then you never have to worry about finding customers. You never have to worry about any of these things because your frequency out to your customer world, they know who you really are. They love who you really are. They start telling everybody about you and you can develop this stuff really, really quickly. But I wanna ask you today, what is your intention? Is it just to slam them in something? Is it just to get your way and not their way? If you're giving your client, if you're putting your clients goals at the center of all your decisions while you're helping them, they'll know it, man. They won't even hit you with a whole lot of objections. Frequency, your frequency, how you feel about you, how you feel about the business that you're in. You know, if you really truly love what you do, you're on this video because you want to be the best, go be the best. You know, go serve these people at the highest level. Go have the most fun with them. Go have the most authentic interactions with them. You see a lot of broke salespeople, but you don't see broke closers. Closers, you never can tell they're closers. You never see, it's not the guy running around just yelling and screaming. It's the guy that's just handling these interactions, making friends, making family. It's the guy that's just undercover making these things happen. And that's the guy that makes business for life. Does that guy got a lot of energy? Is that guy having fun? Absolutely. But that guy, his intention is the best in the entire company. And that guy is developing, or girl, is developing something that's unbeatable, which is a great brand of a reputation of the customers loving him or her. So thank you guys. Stay tuned for more. Kick butt if you ever need me.
my cell phone number, 480-780-2203. Again, it's 480-780-2203. Thank you.